you have children? I run Style Like You with my daughter. Sounds like you did an amazing job. I think so. I could actually say that, yeah. I'm proud of them. And you should be proud of yourself, yeah, mainly. That's the starting point. But I it's think true. that is super influential. Yeah. So this is just a very organic, casual conversation. You jump ahead of yourself, just let it, like, let it flow. Can you talk a little bit about what your style says about you? I'm getting more experimental as I get older. Sometimes I want to have red lipstick on, you know? I want to feel super feminine. And then other days, I feel very boyish. Can you take off your sunglasses? Sure. Please. Talk about presumptions that people may have about you based on your style. Because I'm petite, I think people think that I'm much younger. And then they're shocked to know that I have a child that's like 15 and a half. Can you talk about a struggle that you've turned into a strength? Growing up in a, in a household with a lot of turmoil and just not feeling safe. When you grow up that way, you become kind of insular. It affected my relationships with people, you know, and just an intimacy with people. You know, you don't have the tools. What I experienced was more like yelling. So it's very difficult when that's your world and you grew up that way and then here you are, a conscious person trying to figure it out and you, that means you have to speak to other people, you know, and you have to connect through feeling. And if, you don't, if, if you've always detached yourself and created a barrier for yourself because you don't want to have th that exchange because that exchange was a representation of pain, it, it's very challenging. You know, but from that, I was gifted my son. I had my son when I was 18. My son came to this world. It's incredible. This kid was born talking to other people. Like, he's the friendliest, most outgoing person ever. He taught me how to be a mother and how to nurture and how to love, but he also taught me how to be open to people. Even coordinating play dates, you know, he'd say like, okay, mom, just call her. I'm like, no, no, I'll wait for her. You know, like she wants, she invited me, so she should call me. He's like, no, no, just initiate it, do it, just call her. But those things were challenging for me. Mm -hmm. When people go through a lot of darkness in their life at a young age, if they're brave enough to confront those things and work on them, they turn out to be the people with the most light. I'm so thankful every day. I feel like I came full circle. Can you talk about something um, that, that you feel, you know, an imperfection, something that you've perceived to be an imperfection in yourself that at this point you would never trade? Being skinny, when I was younger it was, it was frustrating because I come from a culture where uh, women are celebrating, braided for their big butts and boobs and being thick and I always stood out <laughs> as a little, as a toothpick. And they used to make fun of me, quite frankly. Like my aunts would tell me like, you need to eat. So I had a period of time where I, I was weight training to gain muscle mass. I was like taking the whey powder and, you know, eating tons of eggs. I did get a figure that I liked, but then I was like super cut. Yeah, I kind of looked boyish, my body did. And, and my stomach was suffering terribly. So I, I just decided, fuck it. I, I'm, I can't. I mean, I ended up having to go to the hospital from, from the stomach issues. From eating so much? From it's eating like all this whey that has all these chemicals. It's like so many skewed ideas, so much confusion. No wonder women are like pumping their fucking lips and their asses. They're trying to confuse us, so you know, because they want money. I mean, even women that, that I feel are super evolved and get it, you know, even they have to take a stand and, and reflect and say, I'm, I'm not buying into this I, and I'm not buying it either.
When do you feel the most vulnerable? When, when I feel like something's going wrong with my son. I think because I've been a mother from such a young age, it's a big part of my identity. And so when things aren't right in that department, I start to feel like I'm unbalanced. We have a very energetic exchange. And so when I feel like that's off, it, it rocks me. Me already knowing that and identifying with that, it's meant to give me a signal that I have to work on. I can't have that attachment. Last question is, can you talk about why being in your body is a good place to be? I'm usually like a little energetic bubble. Part of being sensitive is you feel everything mm -hmm. in your heart center and my body sends me a signal. When I start feeling tight in this area, I know what to do to alleviate that. And there are times like yesterday, you know, I've been working on a lot of projects and when you're working on so much, your brain, there comes a point where your brain almost, it, it starts to short circuit. And yesterday was one of those days that if I didn't have those techniques, it could have gone very wrong. Um, and I found myself like talking super fast and like, mm -hmm. you know, everyone that I saw that I knew, I'm like, ah, you mm -hmm. know, super hyper. And I was conscious of that. I wasn't judging myself. It's just like, okay, you're hyper right now, cool, <laughs> you know, and went back home, had a nice rest, woke up, started things slowly. So I feel like, yeah, I feel like, you know, if, if you pay attention to your body, you, you'll come to the conclusion um, of what it is that you need. How do you feel now after having done this? I feel fantastic. <laughs> I can, yeah, totally, I feel, I feel great. Yeah. They should incorporate something like this in school for kids. You know, there, there has to be a different way, mm -hmm. you know?